I'm going to try my best to explain to you all about Wi-Fi, what makes it so great and, on the other hand, not so, and explain the latest Wi-Fi standard, Wi-Fi 6E, and how it's faster than a gigabit hardwired connection, and what this means for the future of the wireless standard. Because, well, my name's Alex, and you're watching TechFlow. So what are the latest standards of Wi-Fi, both Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, respectively? Now, Wi-Fi 6E stands for Wi-Fi 6 Extension, and it actually opens up a new band in the 6 GHz range for wireless communication, and this is absolutely huge. Back in 2007, 802.11n was released in both the 2.4 and the 5 GHz radio space, and this is what we usually refer to nowadays as Wi-Fi 4. Now there were some versions that came before this, like A, B and G, however these aren't really used anymore and really aren't too relevant in 2022. Back in 2007, having a dual band, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio in your system was considered a luxury item. Most internet service providers were shipping out combi router modem forward slash wireless access points that mainly worked at 2.4 gigahertz wireless N. And this sucked for a few reasons. Mainly because down at 2.4 GHz, we share that radio space with a few other things like car alarms, baby monitors, and even other smart home protocols that all run on 2.4 GHz. Making matters worse, at 2.4 GHz, you only have a maximum of three non-overlapping channels, meaning that if you are in a built-up area and somebody else is on your same channel, well, you're basically just fighting for airtime, resulting in in really slow speeds. As time got on and Wi-Fi usage started to boom, along with the rise of the iPhone, the new standard 802.11ac was introduced and finalised back in 2013. And this is what we know nowadays as Wi-Fi 5. It was much better than the previous 802.11n standard Wi-Fi 4 because it specifically only worked in the 5 GHz radio space. This was much better because the 5 GHz radio space was reserved for this type of communication, so there was nowhere near as much interference using 5 GHz AC, and you had far more channels to work with. At Wi-Fi 4, Wireless N, you only had three. Now, Wi-Fi 5 did come with one major caveat or drawback. However, in my opinion, it was more of a benefit to the wireless internet industry in that it didn't have the range that 2.4 gigahertz had. But the reason why I think this is a benefit is because people that live next to each other, let's say in an apartment building or a condo, because it simply didn't travel as far, you didn't interfere with your neighbors as much. And this is the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, the biggest leap in wireless communication, and this is what makes the difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E even more interesting. The next standard, 802.11ax, was released in late 2009, and this is what we know as in the industry as Wi-Fi 6, but this is where it gets a little bit confusing, because Wi-Fi 6 uses the same 5 GHz frequency that Wi-Fi 5 used. Now we'll go over later in the video what the main differences are between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6, but all you need to know for now is Wi-Fi 6E is the extension of Wi-Fi 6, and Wi-Fi 6E uses the 6 GHz radio frequency space. Now this is the next big leap in Wi-Fi. It's not the jump from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6, it's the jump from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E, because you can simply see here with these graphs how many more channels we have to work with. So those are all the standards of Wi-Fi, 4, 5, 6, and 6E. Now let's talk a little bit about the differences between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 and the benefits there. Now to understand this, you need to understand a little bit about how Wi-Fi works. Unlike connecting with a hardwired cable, a wireless access point has usually got multiple clients connected to it. And Wi-Fi works in a fair way. So let's say you've got four devices connected, only one device can talk at a time. Meaning that if you've got one really poorly connected client to your access point, let's say they've got about 20% signal and are struggling to send their packets to the access point, 
that single client will affect the performance of all of the clients connected, even if client one, two, and three has got a 90% signal to the access point. They'll still get terrible performance because they have to wait in line. Now to tackle this, manufacturers introduced MIMO, stands for multiple in and multiple out, basically meaning that devices can talk at the same time. So imagine your wireless access point is a highway. The more lanes on the highway, the more separate devices can travel at the same time, but obviously there's still a ceiling to this too. The next thing to talk about is wireless speed. Now, as you know, Wi-Fi uses binary code, which is a mixture of ones and zeros. Older Wi-Fi 5 radios are capable of something called 256 QAM, which means you can transfer about eight bits of binary in each packet. Wi-Fi 6 raises this to 1024 QAM, which basically means you can transfer around 10 bits of binary per transmission. And in real world speed terms, you're looking at about a 30% increase in speed speed between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Now cast your mind back to 2010 when you had some poor Wi-Fi performance, you'd go out to the shop and you'd buy a little wireless repeater. You'd connect it to your Wi-Fi network and it would expand your Wi-Fi coverage, but the performance would be absolutely dire. The reason for that is because mainly these old repeaters were at the 2.4 gigahertz range. And like I've mentioned, we only had three channels available and that repeater has to receive the signal from the original router and then send it out to the client device. We've got no channel left to do any talking here, which results in awful performance. Nowadays, fast forward to 2022, you can go out and buy a Wi-Fi 6E mesh system and the backhaul for that mesh system can use the brand new 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi E standard and then reserve Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 4 for all of the client devices that are connecting to the main router and to the repeater or the node of that mesh mesh system. Now before I drop some tips for you guys on how to improve your current broadband speeds at home and your Wi-Fi performance, I need to thank today's sponsor, NordVPN. Now you all know what a VPN does, and if you don't, I will brush up on it in a quick second, but here is just a few of our favourite reasons here at TechFlow as to why we like Nord. Now obviously a big reason to use a VPN is to protect your privacy online and that's why Nord use diskless servers so they store absolutely no configuration about what you're doing at their server sites. Furthermore, they're upgrading their servers to 10 gigabits a second so using a VPN used to be slow, that is now a thing of the past so downloading your 4K games and large video files shouldn't take forever. Now Nord are introducing this new thing called Nord Links which basically uses the WireGuard protocol to make sure the actual connection to the server is super super secure and furthermore you can actually use two VPN servers from Nord at once to furthermore make whatever you're doing that little bit more secure. So if that does sound good to you guys, we have an exclusive deal for NordVPN for you. If you go to nordvpn.com forward slash techflow, you can reap the benefits of this awesome deal. And it is literally no more guys than a cup of coffee. So guys, some things to look out for if you're struggling for Wi-Fi performance at home or wherever you are. Make sure you're using at least Wi-Fi 5. I mean, you don't want to be using 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 4 wireless N. It's important to keep this network up and running in your home. For example, in my house, I have my wireless N network reserved for smart devices like ring doorbells, smart speakers, Google Homes, she that should not be named by Amazon. You guys get the point. That is what the 2.4 gigahertz network is good for and then you can reserve the 5 gigahertz network 802.11 AC for all of your devices like phones tablets laptops gaming laptops computers all of your smart TVs things that are streaming 4k video and need the low response time and the high throughput just make sure the names are different so you can make sure you're connecting to the right network now the other thing that can impact your wireless speed and performance is the actual channel width or megahertz that your Wi-Fi is running on. Like I mentioned earlier, at 2.4 gigahertz we only get 20 megahertz of channel spectrum and with 20 megahertz we only have three available non-overlapping channels. At 5 gigahertz, Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac, we have a few more non-overlapping channels but we also get the ability to run at 20 
40, 80 or 160 megahertz. And you guessed it, the higher the megahertz, the more channels your Wi-Fi is gonna use at any one time, meaning you'll get faster speeds, but at the same time you will be subject to more interference. So if you're getting lots of interference, i.e. high ping times, then it might be worth lowering this down to 20 or 40 megahertz over on the Wi-Fi 5 radio. We talk more in depth about this over in our Pimp My Wi-Fi episode two with Ty, where we did a full on network scan at his house and improved his Wi-Fi tenfold. Now, if you're struggling for five gigahertz range because it doesn't travel anywhere near as far as 2.4 gigahertz, you're gonna wanna go ahead and add a hardwired access point to your network. This is basically your next best option. If you can't do that because you'd struggle to run a cable to point B where you'd want to deploy this access point, then your next best option is Wi-Fi 6E mesh systems. As usually is the case with poor Wi-Fi performance, one of your devices will either have a weak signal and is bringing your network down, or you've just got too many devices connected to one access point. But there you guys have it anyway. Those are the Wi-Fi standards explained and a little bit about how Wi-Fi works. So if you are just, you know, having bad service with your Wi-Fi, you know a little bit more about it and can hopefully troubleshoot the issues causing it. Anyway guys, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow, and yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.